Okay, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem in Python. We're given an array or a list of numbers, and each of these numbers corresponds to the price of a stock on a given day. So for instance, this is the first day that the stock becomes available, say, and it's selling for a price of 310. Here, the price of the stock goes up $5 at 315. The next day, it goes down to 275, and so on for each of these entries in the array. What we want to do is we want to figure out if there's a way for us to calculate the maximum amount of profit that can be made by buying and selling one share of stock. So for instance, if we buy here on the first day for 310, so we buy the stock at 310, and then we sell the next day for 315, well, we make a profit of $5. So if we buy at 310 and we sell here, we'll make, we won't make any profit at all, we'll lose money. So it actually turns out if you go through this whole array, the maximum amount of profit that you can possibly make is if you buy on this day, if you buy for 260, and then you sell on this day and you sell for 290. So this will give you a profit of $30, which is the most amount of money that you can make in profit for this given array here. So we want to figure out a way for us to more generally calculate this for any, any array of numbers like this. So let's first of all think about a maybe a brute force approach that's going to solve the problem, but it's not going to be very friendly from a complexity standpoint. So one naive approach would just be to have two loops navigate through this list and then calculate the difference as you go through. So for instance, the outer loop would start on each of these and then the inner loop would calculate the difference between, let's say this guy and all of the subsequent numbers in this list. So for instance, the first iteration of the outer loop would start here, and it would calculate the difference between 315 and 310, so that's a profit of $5. It would calculate the difference between 310 and 275, that's a loss, and it would keep going through all of these elements. And then what we would do, the next iteration of the outer loop would start here, and then we would calculate the difference of all of these other guys as well. And all the while, what's gonna be happening is we're gonna keep track of the max value that we've obtained, because the max value is gonna be the max profit that one can possibly obtain from this list of prices. So let's go ahead and just code that up. We'll give it a quick complexity analysis, and then we'll go over another solution that's going to give us a little bit better uh, analysis. So let's do this one first, because it's probably more intuitive, although it's not, doesn't scale very well. So let's call this buy and sell once and it will take the array A. So let's go ahead and set our max profit value outside of these loops that we're gonna create. We'll set it initially to zero. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the outer loop, which is going to go through as we suggested. So for I in range, length of A minus one. And then we're gonna have the inner loop that's going to go through. So if we start off here, for instance, for the first iteration of the outer loop, we want the inner loop to go through all of these other guys. So we're gonna say for J in range, from i plus one to the length of a. What we're gonna do here is we're going to check if a of j minus a of i, so if the difference of these things is bigger than the max profit, then what we'll do is we'll set max profit equal to, so max profit will be equal to a of j minus a of i. And then after that whole looping structure, what we'll do is we'll return the max profit. So let's go ahead and run this just to make sure it works. So let's say print out buy and sell once A. So we'll do that, clear the screen, and then we'll give this a run. So I believe this is called buy and sell once. So indeed the price that we get, the maximum profit that we get is 30, and that was obtained from buying at 260 and selling at 290. So this does indeed work, but it's not very optimal from a complexity standpoint. So what do we have? So time complexity, Time complexity here is going to be n squared because we have these two loops that are ranging from the outer number here, and then we have the inner loop that's going to be ranging through all the other numbers. So we've got a time complexity of n squared, where n is the size of the array. And then we've got a space complexity that's constant, so that's good. So we don't need any extra data structures or anything to help us along here, but this n squared is not ideal. So let's go ahead and just comment this out for now and think about another way that we can solve this problem that's going to cut down on the time complexity. Just comment that out and I'll get rid of that. So we can actually solve this problem in a linear amount of time. And the way that we can do that is we can compute the maximum profit by computing the difference of the current entry that we're on in the array. 
with the minimum value that we've seen thus far. So we're gonna keep track of the minimum value we've seen thus far as we move through the array. And then we're going to calculate the max profit by computing the difference of the current entry with the, that minimum value. So let's step through this array and we'll kind of see how that looks like. So we're gonna start at the beginning of the array and we're going to say, what's the smallest thing we've seen so far? Well, we're just starting off in the array. So the smallest thing we've seen so far is the first element. So we're gonna take the difference of the element that we're on with the smallest thing that we've seen so far. So that's 310 minus 310. That's just gonna give us a profit of zero. Okay, so we move right along. We keep in mind that our, the minimum thing that we've seen so far is 310, and we're on this element 315. So now we say, okay, compute the difference of the element that we're on with the smallest thing we've seen so far. So 315 minus 310, that's gonna give us five. So 310 is still our minimum, and we are just keeping track of these numbers we're writing up here at the top are the maximum amount of profit we're able to obtain. So we move right along. Now we're at 275. So now 275 is the minimum thing we've seen. So we take the thing that we're on with the minimum, that's zero because 275 is the smallest. So we move right along here. Now we're on 295. So the smallest thing we've seen so far is 275. And we take 295, the element we're on, subtracted by 275. So that's gonna give us 20. So we move right along. The minimum that we've seen is still 275 but we hit 260, which is now the updated minimum, so now that's the smallest thing that we've seen. So 260 minus 260 is zero. We move right along to 270. So 270 minus 260, which is the smallest thing we've seen, that gives us 10. And now we get here, so 260 is still the smallest thing we've seen, we're on 290. We subtract 290 from, or 260 from 290, that gives us 30. Keep moving along. Now 230 is the smallest, so 230 minus 230, that's zero. We move right along. 255 subtracted from 230, that's gonna give us 25. And then we can move right along here. And the smallest we've seen so far is 230, so 250 minus 230 is gonna give us 20. So basically we just keep track of our max as we go throughout, and this is the point at which we've achieved the max profit. So this is the number that we will return. This is the maximum amount of profit that we'll return. And you'll notice that we just started here at the beginning, we just moved through the array so we just move through it once. We didn't have to go through using a double for loop or anything like that. So we're gonna have a linear time complexity. So I'm gonna get rid of that line up there. Or actually what I'll do is I'll just, I'll give it a comment. So you can refer to it if you like. So I'm gonna go down here and then let's code up that approach. So we'll say this is buy and sell once. Again, it takes A just as before. And we're gonna define our max profit. Let's say our max profit is equal to zero. And then our mid price is gonna be set equal to the first element of the array. So that'll be equal to A of zero. Okay, so we're gonna have a loop here. So we're gonna loop through all the prices in the array that we're given A. And then the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate the min price. So we'll say min price is equal to the minimum between the min price and also the price that we're on in the loop. So again, as we go along here, the min price is initially set. We initially set it to the first value in this array A. But as, if we were on the second index value here, we would check, we would say which one is smaller, the one that we're on, so that's price, or the one that was previously set to mid price, in this case, which was 310. So the minimum between those two would be 310 and mid price would be 310 on the second iteration. So then what we wanna do is we'll say compare profit is equal to the difference, so price minus mid price. That's what we were doing up here. So we were checking, what is the difference? For instance, let's say we're on the second iteration again. What's the difference between the thing that we're on, the price in this case, and the minimum price? So again, that was 310 in this case, because that's the smallest value that we've seen up to this point here. So we calculate that. The compare profit in this case is this line up above here. That's a compare profit. And then what we do to make sure that we keep track of which one is the greatest, we'll say max profit is equal to the max of max profit and compare profit. So what are we doing there? So we're, te we're checking as we go through, is the compare profit, the number that we have up here, is that bigger than the maximum profit that we have so far? So initially, we set max profit to zero, so we initialize it to. So as we're going here, we say, okay, yep, five, five is bigger than zero, so now the max profit is five on the second iteration, so that is now the the max profit. So as we move along here, the compare profit would be zero. 
We compare that to five. Five is still bigger, so five is still our max profit at this point. We move over here. Compare profit is 20. Compare profit is now bigger than the max profit. So that replaces the max profit. Now max profit is 20. So we move on in this way. And then at the end of this loop, all we need to do is return max profit. So let's go ahead and print that out. Let's say print out buy and sell once A. So we'll give this a run and see what we get. So we get here 30. So let's just make sure that I actually wrote that. Right, so 30. So that's the same answer that we got using the brute force solution. And just for completeness, let me just write this out. The time complexity of this approach is O of N. Again, N is the size of the array. And then the space complexity is also still constant. So that's big O of one. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. The code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub page. And have a great day. Bye.